One of my friends got stabbed 32 times because he, you know, one of the game bangers didn't want to, he didn't want to give him his new shoes. Just to kind of give you an idea of what it was growing up in Mexico City. This preacher, he basically came up to my mom and said, the Lord is telling me that he has plans for you. He's gonna take you and your family to a distant land and he's gonna prosper you. My biological father was a federal officer, the equivalent of like the FBI in Mexico. My father became very abusive towards us. I think it was maybe occupational hazard, I don't know. My mom eventually decided to leave my father. You know, she said, you know, why don't we just go to the States? She got pretty far until the point where she needed the signature from my, my, my biological father. My biological father basically told her, I will chase you down and hunt you down. You know who I am, and you'll never leave this country. You'll never take my children over my dead body. So we were stuck. One morning on Sunday, my grandfather was at the table reading the newspaper, drinking a cup of coffee, and he yelled for my mom. She started reading on the front page that there had been a federal officer who had been, gotten into an altercation with three brothers who were drug, drug lords, uh, shot him in the head nine times, and left them in the trunk of a vehicle for two weeks. And so my mom sure enough went to identify the body or whatever was left of it, because he was torture and all of that. And he was my dad. So with his death certificate, my mom got the visa and we got to come to the, the United States. Everything we owned, everything we had to our names was in, in our bags. We had two bags, we didn't know the language. My mom's, my mom's brother at the time, he had just arrived from Mexico. And uh, you know, same process, you know, he had to get a visa and not to spend everything he had, so. And we knocked on his door and you probably could not even fit a car in it. It's a very small shack. It was barely big enough to accommodate him, his wife, and his daughter. And it was like six of us. It was, it was crazy, you know? And so we, we piled up in there. You know, I, I remember, you know, going to Walmart to get a, a couple of gallons of milk and nobody wanted to carry them because we had to walk several miles just to get there. We didn't have a car. It was Christmas Eve and we hadn't paid the rent in, you know, a while. The church was bringing us food, you know, from the front food bank to, to just get by. And on Christmas Eve, we saw a car pulled up and he was the landlord. And we thought to ourselves, we're gonna get evicted on Christmas Eve. My mom and I were praying. We just, we just said, Lord, we've done everything that we can in the natural. And you had a promise for us and, and this doesn't look like your promise right now. When, 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 when that landlord knocked on, her do knocked on our door, she just came to say, I've, I've heard of everything that's happened to you. First off, I just wanna tell you that you don't have to worry about the rent, you know. Get back on your feet and you can stay here as long as you need to. And uh, we know it's Christmas Eve and we know you guys are probably not gonna have any presents to open. So she pulled out, you know, two humongous bags with anything and everything you can think of, clothes, jackets, toys. I was supposed to just, you know, maybe potentially get a GD, possibly graduate high school. You know, maybe one day would have a nice little mobile home somewhere with some land. But, you know, but God had a different plan and you know, he allowed me to not only go to college, but, you know, get an MBA, go to grad school. First time somebody in my family bought a home, it, was, it happened with me. My wife is half Persian and uh, her father is uh, Iranian. And he's got a, a similar story to, to, to mine. Uh, when he was um, 16 years old, he came with a foster family to escape the revolution in Iran when the Shah got overthrown. His, his, his dad, my wife's grandfather, was a, was a Persian rug maker. One of his rugs was in the White House. You know, I remember talking to her dad about asking for his, her hand in marriage, and you know, that conversation lasted six hours because we were sharing so much about our stories. Everything began to happen the way that it was prophesied, you know, um, by this evangelical preacher who I had met in Mexico many years ago. Just to see God's faithfulness, you know. I mean, it was incredible. If this story inspired you, take the steps to change your life 
the first step is always to say, Jesus, help me. Come on, let's go distributes hundreds of similar stories of lives changed by Jesus Christ. If you want to be part of this vision, go.